In this video, we are going to discuss about the structure of ear through flow charts. Where we are going to discuss about the structure of inner ear, middle ear and external ear through flow charts. That will help us in understanding the structure of ear through visually in upcoming videos. First, let's start with the inner ear. It has vestibular system and auditory system. In vestibular system, we have sacs and semicircular canals shown in the diagram. We see the sacs are divided into utricle and saccule, whereas the semicircular canals have three regions, posterior region, horizontal and superior, as shown in the diagram. The utricle and saccule form as the macula. The macula of utricle detects horizontal acceleration and axes, whereas the macula of saccule detects the vertical acceleration and axes. And it must be noted here, both utricle and saccule form as the autolith organ, which can sense orientation, movement, gravity and linear acceleration. Furthermore, this autolith has sensory epithelium, which consists of type 1 and type 2 hair cells like kinocelium and stereocilia. On the other hand, when we go to the semicircular canals, we see it forms as the dilated sac called a membranous ampulla. Each ampulla contains an ampullary crest, the crista ampullaris, which consists of thick gelatinous cap called a capula and many hair sensory cells. Now getting to auditory system. For that we have cochlear duct which is divided into scala vestibula, scala media and scala tympani. And within the scalar media, we have organ of corti, which is receptor organ for hearing. It allows transduction of auditory signals into no impulses. And the organ of corti has different type of cells in it, like outer hair cells and inner hair cells. So this concludes us the inner ear. Now getting to middle ear, where we can see the tympanic cavity. And within the middle ear, we have the bony ossicles, consisting of malleus, incus and stapes. Then we move on to external ear where we can see the auricle and external auditory canal. The external auditory canal leads to tympanic membrane. So this concludes the external ear also. Now let's have a brief outlook of diagrammatic representation of ear anatomy and its basic working. First of all we have the eustachian tube aka pharyngotympanic tube. This tube links the nasopharynx to the middle ear. Then we have the malleus bone. This malleus is connected with tympanic membrane on one side shown in the diagram and on the other side it's connected with the incus bone that has been shown in the diagram. Furthermore, this incus is connected with the stapes bone. And finally, this stapes bone is connected to the oval window by its annular ligament. So we can say this stapes bone communicates with inner ear through oval window. Now we have the cochlea, which is fluid filled structure and it has got semicircular canals as shown in the diagram. And these semicircular canals are connected with vestibular nerve and the cochlea is connected by cochlear nerve. It must be noted that mammalian cochlea has the organ of corti. Precisely it is located in the scalar media of the cochlea of inner ear between the vestibular duct and the tympanic duct and is composed of mechanosensory cells known as hair cells. Now if we see briefly how sound waves travel and what are these bones and other structures for, we see the sound travels through auditory canal that first of all hits the tympanic membrane which causes it to vibrate. So this way sound waves are transmitted from outer ear to inner ear towards the ossicles. The first ossicle to receive the sound wave is the malleus bone. It transmits the sound vibrations from eardrum to the incus and this incus then transmits vibrations to the stapes which ultimately sends the sound energy to the inner ear through oval window. So all the sound vibrations or the energy gets into the cochlea through oval window. And we know this cochlea is filled with watery liquid that is the endolymph. So we can say when the sound gets into the cochlea through oval window the fluid moves. And this fluid movement in turn causes the movement in the cochlear partition that has the organ of corti. These vibrations or the sound energy are sensed by the hair cells via the stereocilia 
and convert that motion to the electrical signals that are communicated via neurotransmitters to many thousand of nerve cells. And that way we hear the stuff around. So this is the simple working of ear and its anatomy. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.